Last month, Multnomah County filed a 50 billion, yes, that's with a B, $50 billion lawsuit against some of the world's largest fossil fuel companies. The argument, the companies and their products made climate change worse. And climate change was the cause of the devastating heat dome here in 2021. We thought a lawsuit of that size eh, probably deserved a deeper look. So environmental reporter Cale Williams got into the weeds to study the county's argument. He focused on this question. What makes this case different from the others in the past that have struggled to hold the fossil fuel industry accountable for climate change? This is focused on a specific event which long before the case was filed, climate scientists had already studied and determined was caused by carbon pollution. That's Jeffrey Simon, one of the lawyers representing Multnomah County in a lawsuit seeking more than $50 billion in damages from 17 of the world's largest fossil fuel companies. The lawsuit argues those companies are responsible for climate change, which led to the 2021 heat dome. The heat dome saw temperatures peak at 116 degrees in Portland. At least 69 people died in the county. Hundreds more were sent to the hospital. Now, there have been dozens of cases brought by cities and counties and states over climate change. But Simon says this one is different. The Pacific Northwest heat dome of June 2021 is entirely different because it is irrefutably scientifically caused by carbon pollution. In some other cases, attorneys have struggled to provide a direct link between carbon pollution and extreme weather events. There is always some argument about whether or not one can or cannot scientifically meet out. What is the role of carbon pollution here? But that's not the case with the heat dome. Simon points to a study that came out after the heat dome that said the record-breaking temperatures would have been, quote, virtually impossible without the effects of climate change. Lisa Benjamin, an environmental law professor at Lewis and Clark in Portland and an expert on climate litigation, says the study sets the Multnomah County case apart. Multnomah well, County has this very specific attribution study that says that these impacts, deaths, and the cost of climate change would have been virtually impossible without anthropogenic climate change. Now, I reached out to all 17 of the companies named in the lawsuit, including Shell, Chevron, and BP. Most of them didn't respond, and a few said they couldn't comment on pending lawsuits. A spokesperson from Shell sent a statement saying the company fully supports action on climate change, but we do not believe the courtroom is the right venue to address climate change, but that smart policy from government and action from all sectors is the appropriate way to reach solutions and drive progress. Benjamin, though, she noted that this case is not about setting policy. But that's not what Multnomah is doing here. They're asking for damages and the cost of abatement moving forward. Simon said the county was seeking $50 million in direct damages from the heat dome, including taxpayer money spent on health care services and damaged infrastructure. The lawsuit also asks for another $50 billion fund to pay for upgrades that will be needed to respond to these kinds of heat events, which will become more common as climate change worsens. To unfortunately have to reimagine the infrastructure of Multnomah County to withstand that kind of heat for which it was never built, it was never constructed. It's not Phoenix. For her part, Benjamin noted that it is often the people who are least able to afford it who end up paying for the damage done by climate change. So these are rural communities where it's harder to get to hospitals and health clinics. They're the elderly, their children, their black and brown communities. These are communities that can least afford to pay the cost of climate change and yet are subsidized in the activities of these corporations. So I'm here with Kale now in front of the county courthouse where this, I guess, lawsuit is being filed. I got to say, with the lead lawyer stating the case to us emphatically, I mean, he's got an axe to grind. Is, is there really a good study that ties these things together? I mean, this study was peer reviewed. It came out right after the heat dome, and they said that this type of event would not have, was 150 times less likely to have occurred without the effects of climate change. I mean, you can read the study for yourself. We've got it linked in the story up on our website so our viewers can take a look. But I mean, it's a well-respected study. Okay, so we're not just taking the lawyer's word for it because I'm sure the lawyer is very smart, but you know, they have an angle. They do. No, I did stories on this study when it came out, which was only, I think three or four weeks after the heat dome itself. And this is widely accepted by a huge amount of scientists in the climate community. So then my other question is, does the lawsuit ever go anywhere or does this become like the lawsuit that all the young people have filed to stop global warming and it just drags out for years and years and then gets dismissed somewhere? 
Well, there's a few differences. I mean, that case was really looking to stop practices by the fossil fuel companies. This case is looking for monetary damages. As, as Jessica Vega Peterson said when they did their press conference there the day it was announced, they aren't looking for a payout, they're looking to be paid back for money that they already spent. And there's another key difference. A lot of these cases, you know, they, the fossil fuel companies have tried to move them to federal court. That's one of their delay tactics that the, the lawyers told me about. The Supreme Court ruled just this April that these cases can and should be heard in state court. So I think we're likely to see a trial here at some point. That'll be interesting. And they say they're not trying to create policy, but we did see like in the tobacco lawsuits that that did end up in huge monetary awards and also policy. Yeah, I think there, there are some similarities and some differences in these cases. And with this one, they really are trying to stay away from policy because they've seen the tactics that fossil fuel companies have used in the past to try to deflect on these types of things and they have worked to preempt them you know the the move to federal court there's a bolded line in the lawsuit that says we disclaim any allegation of violation of federal law this is strictly about state law that's all we're looking for so they have seen what hasn't worked in the past and I think they're making moves to try to preempt that yeah all right super interesting thanks Kale. appreciate the update on that my pleasure